Hello, and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to essentially write a subroutine that's capable of computing the reverse complement of a DNA sequence. So more precisely, I guess you could call this a function that, given a DNA sequence's input, will return the reverse complement as the output. And furthermore, I'll show you how to take in some basic input from the user on the command line. So, but first, I wanted to clarify what I mean by reverse complement. So, in this diagram here, we can kind of see that reverse and complement can be thought of as steps in a two-step process. So you can start with, say, for example, the trinucleotide ATG, and you can reverse it to get GTA, but then you can get the complementary sequence of GTA, and so by complementary, what I mean is replace each nucleotide with its complementary character. So the complementary character of G is C, the complementary character of T is A, and the complementary character of A is T, and so on. And so the result is the CAT, which is the reverse complement of ATG. Now we could have done this process in the other order. We could have first computed the complementary sequence of ATG, which would be TAC, um, choosing the complementary of each of these characters, and then reverse that to get CAT. So the reverse complement can be thought of as a two-step process of reversing and then complementing. And so I'm on the command line now, and so I'm going to go ahead and type in Emacs and create a new script. And so I'll just call this reverse complement. Basically, what this script is going to do is it's first going to take in a DNA sequence from the user. And let's start off by just saying, how about print to the screen, please enter a DNA sequence. Okay, and then it's going to print to the screen, and then from the input, from the user will access through a special Python function called input. And so I'll just say DNA equals input and just leave it at that. So that's basically gonna take in from the user, the input. And I think actually we could even make this string itself part of the input. Let me put that there and see what happens. And then print here response you have entered and then put a comma DNA so this should in theory print to the screen you have entered DNA so I'll try Python reverse complement please enter a DNA sequence and I'll just say DNA you've entered DNA okay so now maybe we want to make sure about spaces so one thing here is I'll put an extra space here and if I wanted to be abundantly clear maybe I want to put quotes around my DNA sequence just to make sure that I don't have any extra spaces before and after. So the way I might do that is I might want to put a, a, a quote. Maybe what I could do is I could put a single quote here at the end of this one and then put comma and then another quoted string with a single character. That looks a little bit weird, but the point of that I'm trying to make here is you can put single quotes inside a double quoted string and you can even have a double quoted string where the sole contents are a single solitary single quote and that would be perfectly fine and so if I did this and tried my DNA sequence and then there it is so notice that this put an additional space here um, that may be just something about the way it's printing this together if I wanted to be abundantly cautious about this I'll do one more thing and that is to do what I did last time in my last video which was do a formatted string so in the case of strings, what I want to do is I want to put percent %s and then put that in quotes and then I'll end my quoted string here. And then what I'll do is I'll use that percent %sign. And so the percent %sign had a special function in formatted strings to map the string and its placeholders, in this case the percent %s, to the values in this tuple provided after the percent %sign. And so in this case, it's just a single um, variable inside the tuple, but that's fine. That's a perfectly valid tuple. Let's see if this works. And so this should, in theory, give us the string enclosed in quotes with no spaces before or after the DNA sequence, the, quoted, the quotes immediately adjacent to the beginning and end of this DNA sequence. Okay, fine. So now let's go back to the idea of computing the reverse complement. So I'm going to push this text down, and I'm going to define my subroutine up here. And so how do I define a subroutine? Well, I just need to simply um, use the def keyword. So def defines a 
subroutine, in this case a function, and so I'll call it reverse complement. I'm going to do something here to illustrate an idea to you, and that is um, the fact that I can use multiple subroutines within a subroutine and have a subroutine call multiple subroutines, and to furthermore use this idea of this two-step process for illustrative purposes. And so therefore what I want to do is I want to define comp DNA, and that's going to be my complement of the DNA sequence. And then I'm going to do rev comp DNA is going to be the reverse of comp DNA. And so then ultimately I want to return. But I haven't defined these other two subroutines as indicated here, so it's expecting that there should be a complement subroutine and there should be a reverse subroutine. Let's first do the reverse subroutine. So I'll do another def function reverse. Now, do I really need a subroutine to do this? Because we saw that doing reverse would be basically colon colon negative one. So I could just return DNA of colon colon negative one. And you may ask yourself, well, why did I need a subroutine for do that? That's actually more characters. Well, I'm just illustrating the point here. I think um, this illustrates how you could do a simple subroutine to do this task. And in some sense, reverse of DNA is sort of a more intuitive representation of the reverse than DNA bracket colon colon negative one, which unless you're experienced with Python, that looks kind of bizarre. So defining a subroutine reverse sort of abstracts away those details and allows for a nice simple representation like when I call this function right here. But the last subroutine that we need to find is complement. So I'll do def complement of DNA. And ultimately, this is where the core of this process is going to go. And I want to point something out here. Note that I've used DNA as the variable for both of these. And the reason why I did that is to illustrate that even though I'm passing in comp DNA for reverse, the point is, is that there's nothing intrinsically complementary about the input to reverse. Reverse can act on any DNA sequence, whether it's previously been complemented or not. And it just basically takes a DNA sequence, takes that series of A's, C's, G's, and T's, and, re and reverses it. Secondly, I wanted to find this complement. So I need to find a dictionary. And we did this before. We had A mapping to T, and C mapping to G, and G mapping to C, and T mapping to A. And that defines our complementary dictionary. And so in this case, the dictionary is such that the key is any character and the value is the complement. And so I need to also define comp DNA, and this would be an empty string that's going to be our start of our complementary DNA sequence. And I would want to loop through the input characters for B in DNA. And I want to concatenate to comp DNA each character one at a time, but concatenate the complementary nucleotide, which can be accessed by comp of B. And then lastly, I would return the complementary DNA sequence. And so this should, in theory, be sufficient to compute the reverse complement. And lastly, I could print out some, some sort of print statement and say something like this. Um, the reverse comp. And I'm just going to do reverse comp for just to make them line up more easily and put percent rev comp DNA. And of course, I need to call the function. So I'll do rev comp DNA is equal to reverse complement of the input DNA sequence. Save and run. So please enter DNA sequence. Here's my DNA sequence. Hit enter. And I got an error. Okay, fine. Probably have a typo. Complement. How about complement? So let's just change that to an L. And so now the name of our function here is the same as the name is when it's called, character by character, and that's required to run anything within Python. So simply save that and run it, and Python reverse complement. Now it asks us for a DNA sequence. We type that out, and lastly, we get the result. And so in this case, T is complementary to A, and A is complementary to T, and so on and we have a reverse complement sequence. So hopefully that clears up a lot about what reverse complement is. We were able to do it with basic Python using dictionaries, looping through and concatenating
the complementary nucleotides stored in this dictionary for each character of our input sequence. And we're able to show how reverse complement can be done as a two-step process where we have reverse and complement treated separately. And so with that, I'll close this video, and I'll see you next time.